Hello, I'm Mr. Byrne, and today we're talking about ISO. ISO or ISO, either way you say it is fine. My grandpappy, back in the day, he would have to go to the store to buy film. This previous system was known as ASA. Now we call it ISO. ISO has to do with the sensitivity of the sensor in your camera. You usually use settings like this in bright situations like this. But when situations change from super bright situations to ones like this, you'll want to change your ISO setting. A stop in photography is a measurement of light that either doubles or halves the amount of light in your images. When you adjust your ISO from 100 to 200, you are doubling the sensitivity of the sensor. The measurements are measured by 100, 200, 400, 800. Welcome to the OI Studio. I'm going to demonstrate what happens when you adjust the ISO on your, your camera. I'm leaving all the settings the same. And to help me out, I'm inviting my good friend, Barry Sanders. What happens when you adjust the ISO on your camera is that the sensor gets more sensitive to light and each image that we're going to take is going to get a little bit brighter. Ultimately, as a photographer, you want to produce the highest quality image that you can. That means you'll want to use the lowest ISO number that your camera will allow for the given situation. Like most things in life, that's a trade-off though. By using a higher ISO, you're able to shoot in lower light situations at the cost of your quality. When you increase your ISO, you also increase the amount of digital noise in your images. My grandpapa used to call this film grain. It generally shows up in the darker places of your image like this. As a photographer, the very first thing you want to do when you walk into a situation is evaluate your light and then choose the best ISO setting for it. One of the most challenging places to shoot is in a gym like this. Generally, you're dealing with bad lighting and fast moving action. By increasing your ISO, you'll be able to have a faster shutter speed and therefore be able to freeze the action. Just remember, there's always a cost in quality. The best way to combat this is by having a fast lens. Be sure to watch my next video on Aperture to see how ISO and a fast lens can really get you into the game. Happy shooting folks, and may the wind always be at your back and the road rise to meet your feet. Have a great day. For more videos like this, be sure to like this video, subscribe, and if you're feeling cheeky, ring that bell.